Okay, I'm back out here with the Case Ingersoll 448 high drive uh, with its bagger and hydraulic leaf sucker. Uh, and today, what I'm going to work on is the power to the headlights. Um, I've had problems with it, this in the past. The wire was run up here and it was run through this little clip where I thought it was supposed to be and then I put a new wire and then I put some heat shrink or not the heat shrink uh, put some ceramic stuff on there to keep it away from the heat now I realize it's never supposed to probably be there at all it more likely was supposed to run in a fashion coming out where it comes out here down and across the bottom so it wouldn't have to hinge open and get the slack with the hood it would just be at the pivot point just flexing a little bit so uh, that's what I'm going to do I'm going to start by you know just taking this off um, right now it's bundled together with looks like electrical tape with the ignition coil wire so I'm going to separate that and then I'm going to be able to run it down obviously I'll have to get a longer piece And for anybody that's wondering why is it so important that this headlight thing be run properly, this tractor has only one fuse that runs everything. So if you're going somewhere and the headlight one shorts out, the whole tractor kills and leaves you in a bad spot. So I want to try to run this a better way, probably the way they had it originally. Okay, so let's start up at the headlights. Obviously, they're grounded through just the ground. That just gives a power wire. And all this is... Mine's a little deformed, apparently. There's a male terminal way inside there. So what I've got is one of these female terminals. And I'll just have to whittle the plastic off the very end part because it won't quite fit in there and I don't want to whittle away any more of that original plug because it's a good protector it's hard plastic whereas this is just kind of phony stuff so I'm gonna I'm gonna chip away at that and then that should fit in there all right got my connector I just took took all the plastic off that so it would actually fit in where I need to go I think once I shrink this down, this is a, sh a shrink waterproofing type uh, connector. Well, I think once I shrink that down, the rest will fit in there. Let that cool a sec, then I'll try fitting it in there. Looks good. And then I'm just going to start the uh, wire on its path over to here um, with the zip tie. Maybe I'll go right to the corner with it. That'll probably be the neatest thing. Might be overkill, but I'll do another one. Now, I've got it coming up to the pivot point. 
where when it opens and closes it'll barely have to move and it'll never get into that muffler it'll be way low and then it'll stay out of the way of the uh, radiator which is there so now just to get the wire in its normal operating length actually it's barely changes that's good it barely changes because it's right by the pivot so even if that thing was to fly wide open I'm not going to yank it out of its socket. Perfect. And then what I'm going to do just to prevent any, uh, in case I ever have to clip the wire shorter or anything, I'm going to put a little extra loop on it. And I'm going to tie that wire. Let me get it closer up. I'm going to tie the wire to the socket there so it has like uh, strain relief or whatever you want to call it. That'll prevent me a headache some other day. And another thing I just did is I tucked everything up into that little channel. I could put a little dab of silicone there, but I think it'll stay just to keep it away from this, which is the heat shield for the muffler, which, you know, obviously would be plenty hot. I don't think it, you know, it sits kind of in the in here zone. I don't think it's really right on there, but just to keep them out of trouble. Okay, so now we got the one wire coming from this way, our new wire coming from this way. And I just have to figure out where I want to splice it. So do I want to cut it there? Do I want to cut it up here? No going back now. In an ideal situation, if I was ready to pull this off and get to that other job I want to do for the ammeter, I would go back to the source because I do have enough wire. That would be a more reliable thing, but uh, good enough. I mean, it's for the headlights, so if they didn't work, I guess it wouldn't be the end of the world. All right, I've got the zip ties on. Try to keep my fat head out of the way. Taking as far as we can support it with that other wire loom. further 
support is here. I fished that through the little uh, pinion, uh, the thing you can see, the pinion for your starter. Fish that through there. Now that's the only flappy part, and that's good because we need a little bit of uh, flex there to open and close the hood, just a little. All right, now let's check that uh, hood area there for uh, see if that wire is going to be good like that. That should be just fine. Just a little flex, perfect. All right, now let's fire it up, verify the repair. I hereby certify those lights, Wildwood certified.